Hello, this is Awaken to Truth, and I am Michael Smith. Thank you for taking the time to uh, tune in and watch this video today. Uh, appreciate it if you take the time to give it a thumbs up. And if you would, if you're enjoying these videos, I would love for you to consider hitting the subscribe button as well as hitting that alarm bell uh, so that you know when a new video is uploaded. All right, today I want to uh, dive into a topic that kind of crosses between uh, current events, social, political things that are taking place, as well as uh, biblical, spiritual principles. And if you have listened to uh, any type of news outlets, the media over the past, especially uh, three, four years, all they have, well, one of the main themes that they have talked about is how America is such a divided nation. And in many ways, they had a legitimate argument to make that claim, but it seems that that is beginning to change, not just in America, but globally. It seems like people are starting to unite in a way that we haven't seen in quite some time. And that unifying of purpose among large groups of people is a very powerful thing. It's something that can uh, get a tremendous amount of, of uh, results. It's something that, uh, you know, when that action is taken, it's something that's very difficult to ignore by leaders, by uh, politicians, by rulers, you know, what, whatever type of uh, system you're under. And it's also a biblical principle. And I think that it's possible. And so I'll let you think about this and decide what, you know, whether you see this connection or whether you don't. But I think it's possible that we're beginning to see almost kind of a, a picture of what could happen spiritually as people begin to come together. And so I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. As we look at the landscape today, we find that more and more people are coming together from different uh, backgrounds in order to achieve a particular purpose. And that purpose uh, basically is just to preserve and to uphold the basic uh, societal liberties and freedoms that we have had uh, here in America and in many other places in the world, Canada, uh, many places in Europe. Uh, there has been a basic thread of freedom that uh, has somewhat been challenged in these last couple of years. And so because of that, you find people from different sides of the aisle or people that maybe two or three years ago would not have been really working hand in hand. They are now working hand in hand because when you threaten um kind of the very fabric of people's lifestyle and what they're used to and what they believe that their country is about, you can begin to bring uh, people from different thought patterns and people from different persuasions together because now they have a common goal. It goes beyond just the little small things that we argue about. It goes beyond these little political preferences or that little political preference. Now we can throw some of those things aside and we can come together for uh, the accomplishing of a bigger purpose. And you see that taking place. You see protests taking place uh, in many places. Uh, it, they're peaceful protests from all that I have seen. And I think that's key. They have to stay peaceful because while it is a positive development that people are coming together, and I believe people are unifying, I don't believe the majority of people are any longer divided on many of the big issues that we're facing today. But the danger with that is anytime people come together and things begin to uh, get accomplished, there's going to be certain challenges to keep that going. And one of those challenges is there's going to be uh, dissenters and detractors. So there's going to be detractors that are going to come and try and ruin the unity. They're going to come and try and mess things up. They're going to try and make things turn violent and angry. And that absolutely is what we do not want. And if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, that you should be praying for your country, for your nation about that. You know, Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's very much in line with the Lord's prayer to pray, Lord, let your kingdom be done in my house, in my heart, 
among my family, in my city, in my, my state, in my region, and across my country. You want to pray those prayers that God's will would be done and that his kingdom would go forth and it wouldn't be uh, hindered and stopped. And so uh, as a Christian, I believe that's the perspective we would have. Now, just from a pure political perspective, uh, you don't want to obviously be able to uh, get labeled as some type of insurrectionist or some type of, um, you know, violent, rowdy crew. You want things to remain peaceful because that is the most powerful tool that you have because they can't, uh, by being they, you can decide who that is, but it can't be misconstrued as something that it's not. They can call you names the way that um, uh, Trudeau is doing in Canada. He's calling them racist, xenophobic, uh, whatever. He's, he's calling them all kinds of names. Uh, those names are not legitimate because they have nothing to do with the group of people that are protesting. So people are beginning to see through, well, that's not really representative of this crowd. But when you have a, a rowdy bunch that cause problems, then it's very easy to label an entire group and an entire movement as something altogether negative. And the same thing happens in the church. When you have a church, like let's just say a local church, that is moving in unity and God is doing something, his spirit is bringing about a unity that only his spirit can bring, then there's always going to come something that's going to try and divide that unity. Many times it comes from within, sometimes it can come from without. But I think on the bigger picture or the more macro picture, I think that what we're seeing in the political realm of people coming together, kind of crossing political aisles and, and borders and boundaries that at one time separated and divided, I think that that could be a bit of a foretelling or kind of a prophetic picture of what is on the horizon for the church. I think that the Holy Spirit could be preparing people in the church to begin to cross aisles and cross barriers and cross borders in the church world, denominationally, organizationally, those kinds of things that for many, many decades have not been crossed. Uh, we've talked about crossing them. We've had conferences about crossing them. We've had uh, you know, all kinds of books written about crossing them. But the reality is in the practical working out of the way church has been done, they haven't really been crossed. We've still been pretty segmented. But I think that as God begins to move and as he begins to give people new uh, perspective, because I think politically many people have gained a new perspective that they didn't previously have. And that's what's enabled them to say, you know what? I don't care if this person's a liberal. Or I don't care if this person's a conservative. We have common interests and we have a common goal. And let's work together to achieve that goal. Let's join hands. Let's uh, be part of this together. I think the same type of perspective spiritually could begin to happen among believers where uh, this group that believes this or this group that believes that, that it kind of kept them separated before, those barriers could begin to come down as people's perspective becomes about the big picture and that's furthering the kingdom of God. And I believe this is an environment where God can begin to do many things and hopefully could even uh, spur a, an awakening or, or, or a revival, so to speak, where many people come to the Lord. Uh, so that's just kind of something that I have been seeing as a possibility. I'm not saying definitively it's going to happen that way, but I do believe some years ago the Lord showed me that there is going to be a parallel between the next move of God and what takes place in the political social realm. And it's possible that this could be the beginning of starting to kind of fulfill that or put the pieces together as you know, to how that is going to look. Uh, so it's my prayer, it's my uh, hope that uh, both on the political side, unity will continue, that it will remain uh, peaceful. And then I pray that on the church side, that the Lord will begin to move in such a way that it also begins to create unity uh, that has been lacking in the past or hasn't been there. And some of those borders and some of those barriers that have kept us begin to come down and we break out of just our denominational barriers or our non-denominational barriers for that reason, or, or, you know, or our charismatic barriers or our Pentecostal barriers or our Baptist barriers, whatever those barriers may be, Catholic barriers, the Lord is beyond that because he is the Lord of all. And uh, as John Wesley said so many years ago in his sermon, The Catholic Spirit, that if your heart is as my heart, 
take my hand. And uh, that's just a simple way of saying, if your desires are the same as my desires and your heart is genuine and your heart is sincere, then we can walk together even if we don't agree about every little thing. I hope this was uh, a video that gave you something to think about. I hope it also gave you something to pray about that the Lord would preserve peace and that he would uh, hold back the hand of the adversary that would try to disrupt the things, uh, the positive things that are taking place in this nation and around the world, and that they would hold and continue to move forward, and that that would open the door for a greater unity in the body of Christ. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I will be back very soon.